WebRTC just isn't the greatest. It, it isn't. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Was that a Glen Cairn? Nat, was that a Glen Cairn? Oh, no, Nat. Tell me. Tell me it isn't I have bare true. feet, too. No. Oh, no. Tell me it isn't so. <laughs> Let me get another Glen Cairn. Was it the. F oh, guys. It was the good one, too. It was no. the Flame Yard. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's the worst. That's okay. That Let is go get a so unfortunate. Do not cut your feet, Nat. I'm gonna try not to. Waifu, call, call her. my wife and be like, "Hey, by the Save way, me. You, like, send me in a broom or whatever <laughs> and some I slippers. Just, I can't step down." <laughs> oh my god, Ash is crying oh, for you. Man. I know that's terrible, <sighs> dude. Did you did you buy those new ones? Yes, I did. Okay, so I had like a ton. Yeah. Of course, it happens it just, right after you got a bunch. It's right. like, hey, could you uh, could you bring me a broom? <laughs> oh, no. And some slippers. I dropped a glass inside the room, and I don't have shoes. <laughs> Savior, save me! The hero we need. Help! <laughs> Help me, please! We had a. We had a big breakage the other day too. We lost some uh, Halloween decorations, or one oh, yeah. one oh, Halloween man. decoration, I guess. Yeah. Were they ceramic? Like the it was ceramic? A it was uh, ceramic you one. Yeah. one. You could drop, grab my Crocs from the front. Didn't spread out as much as glass. Yeah, some of those ceramic things though can like bust Thank into you. a million pieces. It. Oh, it did. It did. There was like basically ceramic dust everywhere. And you, you probably remember this from when we were kids, but if you remember coming to my house and inside of that living room area, there's like the TV fireplace. And then on the side of it, there's like these cubbies that were there. In those cubbies that were right in the living room, there were some white uh, oriental looking ceramic dolls essentially and they were there were like four of them and each one of them was like a ceramic woman beautifully crafted all that kind of stuff and they were like three or four they were from a famous artist who did ceramic artwork medusa yeah I, Bro, not what? medusa but <laughs> so one day We don't know whether or not how it broke. Possession. But it's possessed. We know that it happened right after a cleaner came. It was possessed. So it was a cleaner. <laughs> That's what my mom thinks, and my mom never hired that cleaner again, but the cleaner was adamant that they didn't do it. Of course they were. Ceramic is a form of stone ash. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it was shattered into a billion pieces. A billion, you say? Yeah. You ask if I remember, and I remember the cubbies. I don't remember the dolls because I'm pretty sure I blocked that shit out because of how horrifying that is. Because uh, dolls, they, dolls are, terrifying. are scary. They were very interesting. I, I will say that. Very so obviously while, haunted. While Nat is... Uh, I'm done. Cleaning the... Uh, the war. Uh, Anthony, how has your week been? I don't even know. I've just been working nonstop. I uh, electrolyzed the fence. Finally. Because cows keep escaping. So Cows keep escaping. They, they're doing it again. This is. I think this is a dedicated team at this point. This is a dedicated set of cows, my guy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, the funny thing is that my lawnmower was broken for so long that when they got out each time nowadays, I was just like, you know, let's just stand here for a minute. You're doing a great job. I haven't been able to mow that. Like, I, I, I get it. And then yesterday, I also fixed the lawnmower. I had to replace the carburetor and everything. And Ash had this great idea, my wife, that what if you just dumped the grass over the edge? And like usually I'll just mulch the grass, which is where you just let it sit. 
Um, but it was so long that I was like, I think it would just kill itself. Like it, there'd be so it much. Would. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, I'll do the hard part. Cause it's so much harder to put the bag thing on it, let it go in the bag and then like dump it. But I started dumping it over the fence and eventually like on the seventh bag, one of the cows was like, holy crap, this tastes amazing. And just started gobbling it all down. And then eventually all three of them were there and they're just like having the time of their lives. And I was like, yeah, you don't have to break out anymore because I cut it up and I gave it to you. So stop. <laughs> you dummies. <laughs> you big dummies. Yeah. I'll go next since it's my trash and I'm about to take out. Yeah, man. Um, uh, today was supposed to mark the beginning of my studying for, uh, well, sorry, refresh. I was supposed to start studying two weeks ago, but I needed to recover from crunch weeks, from crunch months. Yeah. Three in a row. Um, so today marks the beginning of that. But the week before that, um, what did we do? <sighs> I didn't do much, man. I came back from work and I just like enjoyed the fact that I could actually come back from work and not have to do work, which was awesome. Like, I think it's the first time that I've been fully cognizant of the fact that, like, I don't come home and stress about the fact that I have to go back to work in the next 12 hours. That's awesome. That's huge. Yeah. So, so it was huge. Um, I enjoyed that week. This next week, I'm going to try and fill as much of my free time with um, content as possible so that I can go ahead and start moving out of this era of my life but um my my wife's friend is over right now and you know i like how whenever people come over and this is no, this is not a comment about when you came over eric and so don't don't think this you is ruined you. everything you know how, obviously no he did he did i know so whenever like, he comes you know over here i'm just people... like oh my god i'm so glad he's here wow <laughs> wow wow you guys should really talk about that. Um, Wait, I said only good things. <laughs> he did. He did. <laughs> sure, you did. I did. Yeah. I'm learning yeah. from uh -huh. uh, Whistle and Diesel. You just uh -huh. you sound like you're about to say an insult, but you say a compliment. <laughs> anyway, you're the one talking right now. <laughs> I know he does I the know. double sided. I'm the idiot. He's like Eric's so you're shit not, at Eric's snowboarding amazing that at when this. he comes yeah, over, yeah. I feel great about Anthony, myself. you are so smart, it gets in the way of you being smart. <laughs> uh, no, 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 wait, that was still an insult. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the only thing that I can liken it to is whenever people come over during, like, the work week and, like, you don't know how to balance that, like, work life, celebration life like at the same time you're so like in like overdrive that, that, yeah you're yeah. like but like it's been good this time because i haven't really had to do anything because like i've i've just told myself this isn't your friend like she's great like not uh, nothing to say against her at, at all but it's just like more so like you're trying to like stop mel's here she's here for mel so you don't need to worry me. about it like yeah, you can so be normal yeah, I can just be normal. That's so I've been great. just doing my own thing, hey. which is great. This is a great mentality, guys. This is, That's we're, like, we're taking dude, you, you, you just like unlocked ultra instinct of people visiting. For sure. <laughs> for sure. Like if it's like the only problem is whenever like if you guys come over, it's it's on. It's yeah. Me. So you're so like <laughs> you're redlining the car. Constantly. So, so I'm just like, we <laughs> <laughs> burning out the engine real quick. Pretty much. But yeah, I, that, I was, feel that was my week. Yeah, yeah. My week was pretty easy. Um, I have nothing bad to say. The Frey Ranch came in at the very end of our last podcast, and I tasted something incredible. We'll talk about it later. Um, and yeah, that's about it. So Not a bad week. I'm going to start off with a story. Oh. That Anthony's going to hold over my head as the trifecta of mistakes in my life. Oh. Because, of course, things come in threes. Oh, shit. It's weird. So when I was young. When I was a young boy. When I was a young boy. I would go over to Anthony's house all the time. And we'd, we'd kind of have to do, like figure out our own food sometimes. Well, <laughs> one day, they were out. Everybody was gone. Anthony was like, we have Hot Pockets. Now... 
my mind thought about it like this. Ah, you have the box, the hot pocket. You put it, the box, I'm into sorry. the microwave. Is this when we were wait, swimming? wait. Yes. It was pizza, brother. It was pizza, but it was like a hot pocket pizza. It was a box pizza thing. Yeah. And you'd never seen it before because it is different. Yes. And so in my mind, I just want to explain. Hot, how I well, hot about pockets it. are way more obvious. Yes. Okay. So this has helped. Yes. Like a hot pocket literally comes in the thing you microwave it in. Yes. And I thought phys the physicality of it, the physics portion of the heating element was similar to a hot pocket. It's not. Now, the <laughs> difference is this pizza box didn't have built in venting. So what does that mean? That means the pressure builds inside of the box and it heats up and bakes whatever's in there 10 times more than you probably expect it to. So what do I get? Molten lava in a box, right? Like terrible. Uh, at that point, I was like, I looked in the box and it looked like molten lava. The box felt like molten lava. So I was like, I'm just going to throw this away. This, yeah. was, this Meanwhile, was a mistake. <laughs> actually, me and my whole family are at the pool, Eric went back on his own because he was so hungry. Oh yes. my god! And Eric. <laughs> and for for those of you that have met, have seen these, you have a box. You have to like peel it open and rotate it yeah, around and place it on, it on the back. Yeah, which is not obvious at all. It so, is not. So that was it. Was a very weird mechanic. And he didn't tell us it. about it, but we discovered it. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, I, I ruined that pizza. That was the funniest I know, part. Is, there, you know, is my there parents being like, way to broach that conversation? <laughs> He's like, each one of us kids get did, interviewed. Like, I, did you do this? Did you do that? Did you do this? We're like, no. We're like, oh, it must have been Eric. And he's long gone. <laughs> he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I did take responsibility. The next time I came over, they <laughs> asked. And I was like, we're yeah, all I laughing our asses pizza. off. We're like, what did hey, you That's do? fair. <laughs> that's fair. So that was that was one. But like I said, comes in threes, you know. This the second one, I was a little bit older. I was about 15. And I was at oh, no. my parents' house in Florida. And my parents were like, "Hey, we're going to go on a date and we have a night for ourselves." And I was like, "Cool." They were like, "Here's what we did. We bought you a pizza, and this one was like a DiGiorno pizza type of deal." And it was in the freezer, and he, he was like, this is very simple. You're going to take out that box. You're going to take out the pizza, unwrap it. You're going to oh, put it on the sheet man. next to the stove, and then you're going to put that sheet in the oven. It tells you how high to do it, but I'm going to take all that away. It's 425 for 20 minutes, right? I was like, cool. That's really easy. So, boom. I'm there enjoying my night. Get a little hunger. You know, tummy starts rumbling. I'm like, okay, tummy let's go. Rumbling. Let's go to the freezer. I pull out the pizza. I unwrap it. I put it on the sheet next to the, the oven. And I'm like, awesome. I take that sheet. I put it into the, the oven. I've preheated it. It's good to go. Boom. Now I'm waiting 20 minutes. About eight and a half minutes passed. And I'm like, hmm. eight and a half. Bro. And I'm like, what is what is this smell? You're stressing me out. What is what is, what is happening? And I'm like, let me go check on the pizza just to make sure everything's good. I go in and I look in. And at this point in time, what I see doesn't make sense to me. Because it sure looks like the sheet that I put it on is melting to the bottom of the, the stove. Yeah. To the yeah. oven. It wasn't Bro. on fire? Oh, no. I got there just in time to see the little gloop hit the bottom and catch flame. <laughs> At that point, you know you're I trouble. open it up and it's falling <laughs> through the cracks. And I'm like, oh, this is bad. I'm in trouble. <laughs> now I have to go run and get a fire extinguisher, which is its Dude. own story. Right? Find Dude. the fire extinguisher. And I don't know if any, no, no, nobody tells you as a kid what fire extinguishers are like. Like, you don't test it out at school. I you did. don't sit there and, like, do it. You aim at the it. base of the fire, though, dude. You I look, the pin. look, hitting the fire was not the problem. The whiteout 
from my entire vision being white and the entire house turning into a cloud of white powder is not taught to you. You aren't ready for that experience, right? You press this button and you can't see anymore. Like, it's really weird. Oh, you silly bastard. I was cleaning that house for about two weeks. Yep. So the sheet that you put it on, was it not the cardboard? It was a cookie sheet. A plastic one? A plastic cookie sheet. I thought you put it in there on the cardboard. Cookie sheet. No, 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 no. Not on the cardboard. It was a plastic cookie sheet. So, dude, your your dad put a plastic cookie sheet on the on the on the counter. It's always on the counter. The the and here's the he meant here's the to thing. To use that, a different sheet. The sheet what the cookie sheet was. I can't remember how much you would remember about the Florida house, but it's got like an island. Yeah. And then there's the stove, and then there's a place next to the stove, and then they have like a breakfast nook set of tables to the right of it. On that are a bunch of different accoutrements for putting stuff into the oven. The one on top was a cookie sheet. The one underneath the cookie sheet was a metal pan that I should have put it on. In my, like blind trust (laughs) of uh you know mark i was like i'm taking that and putting it into the oven did not think about that whatsoever (laughs) with the alarm going off in the background yeah so so that's two that's two now in my adult life you know i like do a lot of stuff One of the things is we were having friends over the other night and I was going to cook tandoori chicken, which we do all the time, right? Me and my wife make a whole Indian meal. We, she was doing, um, some curry. We were making saffron rice. We were doing, we were marinating tandoori chicken. I was putting it out on the green egg. Now, Every time before that happens, I like to clean out the green egg in the morning just to make sure it's like a fresh grill. I'm just anal about cleanliness and cooking and all that kind of stuff. So the morning of, I'm like, I'm going to blast the green egg up to 800 and then I'm going to let it clean for an hour and then I'm going to clean it out and then I'm going to put new coals in before I start to cook. So I get up. Blasted at 800, I let it run for about an hour just to kill off anything that may have gotten in. Bacteria, spider gets in through the... Whatever. (laughs) I don't care. I'm just like... And you don't really have to do that. Like, a lot of... If anybody ever watches this YouTube in the future, people are going to be like, you're an idiot. You don't have to do that in the green egg. I'm like, look, look, I, I know. I'm just OCD. Like, don't worry. So, I do that. And now, that was like 10 a.m. in the morning. At around 3 p.m., I'm like 3 to 4 p.m., they're going to be there at 5. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go out, clean out the coals. Uh, I'm going to put in the new coals and then get the fire started so that I can do the 40-minute cook for the chicken. And it'll be ready right around when they get here. So I clean out the coals and... Well, I don't like like having all the coals just sitting on my deck or like sweeping them into the yard... So what I usually do is I have a bucket that I put all the coals in and then I Eric. move I move that Eric. and I dump them out. So Eric, I know where this is ending. I'm going to throw away my trash. <laughs> I'll be back whenever you're done. <laughs> uh, so oh, So God. I clean out all the coals and I uh, put them into my bucket and I cleaned out the ashtray and I put them into my bucket. And then I get the new coals, I put them in, I get that fire started, and I'm like sitting there and I'm going back inside. And I'm talking to my wife at the kitchen counter and I'm cleaning some of the stuff so she can keep a clean workspace. And I'm like cleaning stuff in the the sink and I'm putting it away. And then I look out and there's like a, a steady stream of smoke from the not yet lit coals in the green egg. And I'm like, that's really weird. I'm like, they shouldn't be smoking. I go outside and lo and behold, the coals have melted through my bucket into my porch. 
Oh my god. Uh, I don't know how they were still hot after seven hours, but they were apparently hot enough to melt the entirety of the bucket through the bucket into my porch. Jesus. That's insane. Couch is here. Be right back. Yeah. So, yeah. Now, all that said, went out, cooked the chicken, turned out great. Really, really good. Awesome meal. So, Did you get any you know, pictures? You win some, lose some. Of the of the porch? Of everything. I don't know, man. I did I did not. I did not. Now that I still have the the melted bucket and the the porch, but uh but yes. You reminded me what Ooh, I did this is weekend. This what you cooked? I cooked that on Saturday, yeah. Oh man, that looks that looks so pretty good. What I is this? Are these like ribs? Yeah, those are beef ribs. And I recently learned that brisket is cut from beef ribs. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's how, you, that is brisket. But you lose all the meat between the ribs. Yeah. And it's all and it's more work, so people don't like it as much. Yeah. But it was incredible to me that it just came off the bone, just fell right off like no problem whatsoever. This one actually didn't come out that great. The other one, I did, I did two. The other one came out better. Um, we had started way too late uh, because cleaning took longer than expected. And what was yeah. this? Was this Saturday morning? Oh, I was like working on Saturday. So then I started hours later than I wanted to. So it was like 9, 15, 9, 30 at night when it was finally at the minimum temperature. So we just ripped them off at the minimum. Oh, which yeah, is a yeah, huge yeah. mistake because the yeah it hasn't uh, broken basically down all melted the fibrous yet. material. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. It's all the it's, it's all the things that aren't meat that have to be broken down yeah. so that they aren't chewy and kind of annoying. So it came yeah. out really good for the first time ever doing it, but could have been better. But yeah, it's crazy that it it looks like a brisket because it is a brisket. It's just on the bone yeah. still. Yep, which is really neat. Oh yeah, and brisket can be so good. Yeah, so good if done right. We um, I did, I was able to cook a brisket for New Year's uh last year. Where'd you get it? And it was phenomenal. The Costco oh. brisket is probably the best one you can get outside of a butcher. I wish I had a Costco nearby. Yeah, yeah. The Costco meat section is really well done. Costco usually locally sources. It's meat. Mm. So it usually turns out really, really well. Um, heavily recommend it. And it's usually fairly affordable. I think they put pretty low margins, like 5 to 10% on uh, meat products. So you're only paying about 5 to 10% more than you would if you went directly to a butcher. So I think I got a... Uh, I want to say I got a... a 14 pound brisket and I paid $55 for it. If I remember correctly, somewhere around there, like the 50 to 65 range for 14 pounds. That would be pretty good. Cause that would only be $4 a pound, which is a little nuts. Yeah. It looks like the, uh, the price has gone up a little bit and the average it, it should have because pounds beef is, is 150. Beef is like 2.5 times as much as it used to be. Oh, okay. Then, yeah, that. So, that like works a out. year or two ago, you could sell a cow for a thousand bucks, full grown, 2,400 pound cow. Now, that same cow is like 2,500 bucks. Jeez. It's really, there's a huge shortage thanks to COVID. And because of it, there, there used to be, a, or there, there's like a farmer tax exemption status quo, like qu quota. If you sell like ten thousand dollars worth of cattle in a year, you can do some sort of farmer tax exemption on your like normal income. They reduced it to a thousand dollars a year because huh. they're trying to get everybody to raise cows. Well, you okay. know what that that's kind of cool. And speaking of farmers and taxes, uh, we are trying the Frey Ranch Farm Strength Uncut Bourbon today. This is a Sir. cash strength straight bourbon whiskey. 
I have really enjoyed this company. The Frey Ranch company has been doing really <laughs> cool stuff. The They grow everything on their own farm. So everything is locally sourced. Now, this you know, uses winter wheat. You know, we talked about it when we were just looking at it, uh, about how incredible the bottle seemed before yeah. we had them in person. But it, it's even better in person. Yeah. Um, it looks like a speaking silo. Of bottles, right? Speaking of bottles, Anthony, and I'm guessing Eric, you all have tasted this already. Uh, so Look at I'm how empty Eric's in, is. I'm going to be entirely. No, no, you're still guilty. I'm going to be Mr. entirely transparent. The, <laughs> um, I'm the only one who takes this podcast. Here, so, so yes. well, here's the coming thing. from the guy the that thing. broke the open thing. the angels envy that we all bottled together on the freaking bachelor Look. week. <laughs> the one bottle we said we would keep closed and drink together. Look, I have selective memory just like all of you shut up so <laughs> i will say so this particular whiskey was a birthday present to me from my wife the guy at uh <laughs> my local alcohol distributor that kind of gets me a lot of my stuff he said i would probably really like this one and lo and behold i do really like it i think there are some caveats to this whiskey that we'll talk about throughout the tasting that i think kind of put it off of a newer or uh some palettes but, man, it's a really cool company doing really cool whiskey. And we, we'll we talk about some of the negatives of this type of company, because I think there are some interesting things to be said that have been mm. brought up to me. But... Nat and I, by the way, are comparing it to more Frey Ranches. Yes. I've got the straight bourbon and the rye whiskey. Yep. Nat so, has that. I, I have a very special baby. So this is the Frey Ranch Quad Malt yeah. Bourbon Whiskey. It is... I've already had a little bit of this one because I know you guys don't have it. Yeah. If you can get it, guys. Get it? Get it. Okay. I'm in. This thing slaps. This is slaps. so good. Oh, man. It's so good. So we'll see how it compares oh. to the, the cash. The, so... For sure. When my wife got this, I tried it. I loved it. And I was like, man, I... This one's really cool, Anthony and Natwa. And I wasn't thinking about doing this as part of the podcast, really, until we had the Frey Ranch the other day the for the Flaviar. And at that Bruh. point, I was like, Anthony and Nat love this rye. I was like, okay, we, we have to do a farm strength episode. Like, we, I have to let them try this because I think this is the pinnacle of what they have for bourbon. Mm. So, man. It is Ooh. now on the nose. I get a little bit of like dates, prunes, like dried dark fruits, plums, maybe dried plums. It's a lot of dried fruits, my guy. Yeah. And this is a that hot is a juicy whiskey. Baby. This is a hot whiskey. This is 121 proof. This is a cast strength. It, 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 that puts it at 60.88% alcohol by volume. This, the one that I am having, by the way, is batch 12. I don't know if y'all have the same batch, but that would be I also have batch 12. Anthony, do you also have batch 12? I do. Okay. Yo! So we're trying the go. same batch. And yeah, you get a lot of dried fruits on the nose. You do get a little bit of acetone. Mm -hmm. But I feel like that comes with any any kind of dried fruit. It kind of Agreed. coincides. It goes away if you, you sniff it enough. <laughs> yeah. Your nose kind of acclimates to that for sure. And then I get She's... like a little bit of um, like dark caramel notes. It's very colorful. Oh, I almost took a sip, but I didn't. Because cheers, episode cheers. 27 of the Tap Haven podcast. Ooh, swirl it, throw it away. <laughs> Don't you dare throw it away. <laughs> Not this one. I don't see no. the malt on their site anymore. You don't? No. 
Oh, wow. It's a hot. It's a hot one. That's not why I said wow. Oh, it, it is also extremely good in my opinion. Man, you get those dried fruits right up front. I it slaps you with it. Wow. Yeah, I almost it it almost has a note of um, what are those candies called? Guys, that's hot. I mm. love. <laughs> what is it? Red hot. It almost has a red hot fire. sweetness it to it. Very much has a red hot to it. Yeah, and I'll tell you right now because I'm comparing it to the quad malt same same flavor palette on that end piece of like the cinnamony yeah. red hot kind of vibe it has this corn sweetness that presents as like a red hot oh man with some dark dried fruits it has this nice Small amount of wood flavor, but it's almost indistinguishable, kind of in the middle of it. And it's got this dryness at the end. It really feels like you just held a red hot in your oh, yeah. in your mouth for a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. it's pretty sweet. It's pretty pleasant. Mm-hmm. It is very hot. I definitely think a lot of our newer drinkers, this isn't one to kind of start with. It hits hard. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I was going, I was initially going to say no. Like this would be, this fire is like a good primer as to it how does. bourbon it's, can feel at the upper end. But yeah. I wouldn't start somebody here. Yes. It's a tasty burn, but it is, it does have this like. It, uh, really it's hard there's it's a it is a fight or flight re- response yeah. you can say it eric yeah <laughs> you're like <"Ugh." laughs> now anthony you okay over there oh yeah you yeah, yeah, said yeah. anything okay. yeah that, that's why we were uh that's why we talked about um so nat doesn't have ice but we considered trying to do uh a second pour of this with I, ice i wouldn't even because we bet most people would need even. ice. yeah i think this over a giant cube of ice would be very pleasant it's going to be cool hot it's going to have this bright cinnamon flavor but it's not going to have that heat to it it's going to be a little mm. bit more corn forward a little bit sweeter i think an ice cube will make this a nice drinking whiskey for sure i'm gonna have to try it on my i'm gonna have to try it on my uh everest glasses they're just like the giant uh Mm -hmm. solid chunks of glass that you freeze yeah oh the fat glass sorry the fat ice no no this is actually no um, fat ice is a process right this is you look up the lilton everest whiskey glasses they are crystal glasses that have a piece in the middle that essentially gets super, super cold. And it's in the shape of a mountain. And they have different um, mountains that they do. The first one that they did their Kickstarter for was Everest. And that's the one that they sell uh, the most, I believe. They have Mm, one for the Grand Canyon. They have one for Everest, Denali. They have K2, Fuji. They're very beautiful glasses. And essentially what you do, Nat, is you freeze these glasses. Like they're meant to be frozen. Okay. So they're tempered for that. Yes. Okay. And then they get super, super cold. You don't Uh need ice for your whiskey. You just pour it into this glass. Yeah. So no watering down. But yeah. okay. sometimes watering down can be good because it can bring out different yeah. flavors. And this is one of those situations where it's like it's so strong that, yeah, a lot of people would benefit from watering it down and they would be able to taste different things. Yeah. So, now, yeah. <laughs> I had <laughs> a good friend of mine who I trust in whiskey tasting quite a bit. And we have different palettes, so we like different whiskeys. We have some overlap. To him, 
this falls under an interesting category of whiskey, where nowadays, because whiskey has gotten so big since about 2012, over the course of about 2014 to 2019, you had a bunch of distilleries, quote unquote distilleries, start up, get a super, super young whiskey, age it for the minimum amount, blend it, and then finish it, and then push that product out. And these whiskeys have a distinct young flavor. And he doesn't particularly like that flavor. And I do think this whiskey has that flavor. And the, the way I would describe it is this corn syrup, almost harshness, mm -hmm. where it's almost a, this one doesn't do it as much, but it's almost a sickingly sweet hotness. Mm. This does it really well. I think this is the perfect iteration of that. It is a straight bourbon whiskey. So, you know, it has at least two years under its belt. We don't know how they blended this. We know it's cast strength. So it's probably coming from a bunch of single barrels. But it doesn't, it could still be a blend. Hmm. But I think there's some merit in the idea that a lot of whiskey companies are essentially pushing out super young product to get it out to market. And that product isn't always good. My counter to that would be, I think Frey Ranch is doing that, but they're doing it in a good way. Now, would I love to see a 12-year Frey Ranch cast strength bourbon? 100%. But that doesn't mean that their two-year offering is bad. Hmm. I still think the coolest part is that everything in it is, is grown. grown on the freight ranch. Yeah, that is, no, a, that is really it's cool. It's a great way to sell a freaking brand, man. And it's definitely mm -hmm. not an easy thing to do. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> and this company had a lot of... Um, they started as a ranch. I told a little bit of their story last time. They started as a ranch, and then one of the sons went and said, man, I really like bourbon too. Can I do both of these things? And he's doing it, and he's doing it really well. And I am excited for them to do more because I, I would say that I would love to see something from them that is aged more. I'd love to see some eight-year bourbons, seven-year bourbons, 12-year bourbons from Frey Ranch. I think that'll set them apart from a lot of the market right now that's focusing on these younger bourbons. You know what really set them apart? This what? is this is a business business advice, Frey Ranch. Um, I know you got to have some oak trees on that farm. Make some of your own barrels, too. I dare you. Yeah. Now that's really hard. Like nobody does that, by the way. That is not. Yeah. <laughs> that is insanely hard to do. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm like doing barrel, doing everything, doing, doing everything. the barrel and everything. That is a lot of. That is a lot of machinery and, and setup cost. Like most, like everybody buys Trial their and error barrels. because this is their first time. Yeah. 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 Fine. If Finding someone who's done it before, they have to teach that. That's training of staff. Yeah. It's a huge undertaking. Yeah. Yeah. Getting a still set up and all that stuff like, dude, and using all your own stuff. That's, expensive. that's, that, that's, a t it's expensive, but it's something everyone can theoretically do. Yeah, setting aspire to, you yeah. know, so using their own ingredients on the farm is, uh, not easy, but it's, it's feasible but cutting down your own trees and processing them, <laughs> turning yeah, them into barrels. Bro. That would be, absolutely insane i would be shocked i'd buy it though i would be shocked <laughs> oh yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. so um before we start going ahead and getting into the ratings and everything my other free ranch is 110 proof okay and it so i will say 
that the flavor on this one is more nuanced than what I get from the oh yeah castrate uncut. I think like, that has to do with uh, the winter wheat in the yeah. bourbon. So mm -hmm. winter wheat has a very distinct flavor, and it adds a level of depth that the rye just isn't going to have. So for example, mm. just to give you the mash bill of this, we're looking at 66.6% .6 dent corn, 10% winter wheat, 11.4% winter rye, and 12% malted barley. That is, is a very malted? diverse mash bill. Is it 100% malted? Yes. Yeah. If you get, if are you, you had about, wait, are you talking about mine? Or are you talking about y'all's? No, no, no. The, the He's uncut farm all shirt. of ours. We all have twelve percent oh. of the mash is two row barley that was malted on site. Yeah. Okay. Yours. I'm looking at the mash bill for mine, and does it say on the it's bottle? Almost exact no. same. Nuh uh No, because it's yes. a rye. No, no, this isn't. It's not a this rye. Is a quad it's a quad malt, malt bourbon, whisk bourbon whiskey. Does oh. it not? Does it not have one of these labels on it? I mean, they don't all have it. Does it not have one of those where it breaks that? it down? Yeah, it's right there. What's it say down at the bottom? So mine is sixty-six point eight six dent corn. Okay. Ten percent winter wheat. Yeah. Huh? Which you have eleven point four winter rye, which you have. 12% two row barley, <coughs> which you have. 66.6% dead corn? Yeah. And what was the last thing you were going to say? 12% two row barley, and all grains are malted on site. So I think the big thing is just they're malting the. the... I think they're malting everything. No. Oh. I, don't hey, know. I think you... they're malting. I think they're malting all the grain. Not the rye, but I think they're malting I all see. the grain. And that's why it says quad, because you have the you have the winter wheat, you have the barley, you have the no, no, that's four. So it, it they malt everything. Yeah. They're probably malting everything. Everything is hundred percent malted. That's okay, so that's why this tastes like candy. <laughs> it's guys. It's so good. I don't think you can okay. get it right now. No, I'm really sad. It's a uh, four four yeah. not found. It's like it's gone. Yeah, uh, it's gone. It's it's sold out. And it makes me wonder what the other. So this was a not to derail from where we're where we're going with this uh, uncut because I want to eventually get back to the farmer stre farm strength uncut. Yeah. Um, this was part of a, a line that I think they did for a month. And they just like they did like one run of it, no, no, and no. when we when we signed on, it was n you couldn't even get half of it. You could get this, this, and the other blue labeled one, but the two black labeled ones, I don't remember their names off the top of my head right now. You couldn't even get them anymore; they were just gone. But there is hope because there is an eight month old post on Reddit of someone reviewing the Frey Ranch Quad Malt. And they're saying 90 proof aged five years and 10 months, the exact same yeah. mash. Yep. So I think it might just come up occasionally. Yeah, I there, hope so. And there briefly. are a few places that are delivering it to near me. Ooh, you got get it. Pause the pause the podcast, guys. Pause um, it. Get it. Get it. I'm not even joking. I'm not even joking. It's so good. Wait, this is like but half anyway, the price. It's sixty because it's like it's comparison of size. I'm gonna do this slowly so I don't break any. Is glasses. it a three hundred milliliter, three hundred milliliter yeah. bottle? Three seventy five. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That's why that's it's why. sixty that's, bucks. That's half the yeah. size of the regular. It's. I feel like it's less than half. Like I'm, I'm exaggerating because of the heft of one bottle versus. I'm the exaggerating other. because three hundred and seventy five milliliters. <laughs> times two <laughs> shut up anyway yeah. um but yeah this is fantastic um 
Let's go ahead and let's get let's get into it. Let's yeah. get into it because I feel like I know where everybody stands. With Anthony, us. no, why is it always me? Yes, because I went yes. first last yes. time. And Nat yeah, went but I went first time. like twelve times in a row. Do you do you want me to go first? Why am instead? I always on top, guys? Uh, whoa, whoa, sir. Pause. Hold. Anyway, up. I guess I'll go first. Yeah, somebody sense. It. Yeah, just put your rating right in there, Nat. <laughs> no, okay, no, I know so, why it is. Uh, I know why it is. <laughs> no. Why is Because I'm more easily influenced. The, it's true. That is true. why I I don't usually want your rating to change. Put you first. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, so he's 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 perusing. Damn. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's it. That was the rating. That's my rating. Damn. <laughs> We've had so many coughs this this um podcast. I feel like you guys are seriously feeling this. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. This one feels amazing. Interesting. I hope I still it have does. some for winter. <laughs> I'm gonna I take some. I'm gonna walk some outside and watch the snow melt as I step or past it. <laughs> I'm gonna be real. I don't I don't think this one I, I got this one for my birthday. So how, long was that? how long ago was that, Eric? So mm-hmm. April. So this is two months in, three months in. You just wait. You just said that your birthday was in April. Did you yeah. just open it two months ago? Yeah. Okay, that's what I. I, I just I needed to know because I was like, "What are you talking about?" Yeah, <laughs> you've had no. it for six months. <laughs> wait, was April six months ago? May, April June, was only July, four August, months ago. September. Dude, whatever. It's like September, right? It's no, it's, it's definitely August. August. Oh my god, dude, guys, it's slipping. Already. Isn't it November? <laughs> it's definitely it fall because November. because leaves have been falling like crazy. It is not fall. No, if shit starts falling, it's fall. That's oh. why it's called fall. <laughs> <laughs> so, Anthony, Anthony, give us her fucking rating. Guys. I told what is you. Rating Damn, that's good. <laughs> like, Damn, that's good. Easily what like is that eight or, I'm thinking it's like a nine out of ten. Um, wow. okay. I mean, it could be eight out of ten because it's not super complex. But I'm saying nine out of ten because I'm comparing it to what I'm my wife and I are shills for this hat here, Bardstown. Okay, this is. What a hundred and twenty something proof, yeah, and it is only eighty bucks. We all bought this. We all know how much it costs. Okay, so that we're not spoiling mm-hmm, anything mm-hmm, this time. Mm-hmm, we are. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. eighty dollars. It's strong as hell. It has a complexity. It smells good. It tastes good. It 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 doesn't like insanely evolve, but being so strong, it tastes good. And I feel like most people are. F- they do 42 percent and it doesn't even taste good and it's like wow why'd you water it down in the first place like what are you doing if you don't if you don't water it down to make it taste good what are you doing they didn't water it down it tastes good their rye is a rye that is watered down it tastes good i have their bourbon freaking straight one they watered that down it tastes good all of their shit tastes good and it's half or less the price than a Bardstown. Yeah. That tastes really Ooh. good. Ooh. So <laughs> I <laughs> I still love Bardstown, but mm-hmm. Frey Ranch might be my new favorite. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's not bad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nat. <laughs> Hit us so, with the numbers. Numbers? Okay. Uh, this is my favorite bourbon. Period. Full stop. Freys, I'm a Frey Ranch man. Like, oh my gosh, I uh, y'all are converts, guys. Yeah, we're all simps. Okay, wow. just like if you expected any form of mm-hmm. like, like critical review for this, go somewhere else. Um, now, okay, okay, yeah. yeah. Question. So, yeah, on the Bachelor trip. Yeah, we went to Old Forester. We walked into the city. We picked up Stephen. We went to Old Forester. Mm-hmm. Old Forester. We got a flight of four different whiskeys. Mm-hmm. Every single one of those tasted better and better and better until the last one. 
for everybody except for Anthony. Anthony liked the third best one the best and not the last one. Is this beating any of the whiskeys that you had on that trip? Is it beating all of them? Like, is this is this beating? No. Okay. Okay. So this is. I the say. Th- I say this. I this say this. Just... With the, this is. This is said to the intent that with the price point that they have, okay. knowing that we're not going, it's not even part of the rating at this point in time because we've already internalized that. Yeah. Going with the amount of money that you can put into this bourbon. And then also the flavor palette that goes along with it and the longevity of how long you're going to you're, you can't hit this multiple times in a day and feel OK. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't care how much hair you have on your <laughs> yeah, chest. 121 proof is pretty it's not a, it's not a joke. So you have like one every two days or something because you're not going to it every single day. But he's right. I tried this after it, I ate spaghetti and I got heartburn. Yeah, you're going to it's going <laughs> to like. This is a bourbon that you have to respect. And it is the first one that I've had. And that is why I'm a fan. Because it's the first one that's right. like, hey, I'm great, but you cannot have me regularly. I, I dare you to have me daily. It's the no. first bourbon that I'm like, no, I'm not. I, I refuse. Like, what was it? The, the long, the long, oh, what was it? The longhorn? Uh, it? Matthew McConaughey, Matthew, Matthew Wild McConaughey, Turkey, Wild yeah. Turkey. I was like, oh, I could drink that every day and not even yeah. like bat an eye. Yeah, this one I respect more and I appreciate more in terms of flavor and experience and story, because that's also something that kind of rolls around in all of this in Fair. the sense that like everything that comes out of that bottle comes from that comes from that farm, and that's. Put on top of the legacy that they're already creating. I don't know how long they've been doing this for because I, I didn't really pay attention to the history. I was too busy tasting. But anyway, I don't know how long they've been doing this. But for you to be delivering something that even a layman as myself is saying, yeah, this is quality. Like I can put this against anything I've tasted and it's going toe for toe. It may not win. Yeah, but it's throwing hands like that's fair. The, that's the, fair. the I other agree. person is not leaving, leaving unscathed. So for me, this is like a this is a high seven, maybe an eight. Okay, this is a very very good bourbon. So thank you, Nat, because I need to update my statement, especially uh, because my wife is offended. <laughs> <laughs> so when my wife and I were in. Lovell last time we tried the Arm- Armanino uh, Bardstown Armanier. Oh, no, I think it was Armanino or something weird. It was like a okay. blue uh, label. It oh, was, it was the, Oh my God. I swear it's Armanino or something weird like that. And then we also Nolito tried Amaro. Oh, completely backwards. <laughs> Anyways, we also tried the uh, single barrel that was selected by the hotel we were staying at, which was like a museum of sorts, like an art museum. And that single barrel was also like 60 something percent. Right now, you reminded me that when you said you can't have more like too much of this. Like, you have to respect it and be careful, mm-hmm. right? Well, the Armanino, as I'm calling it, or no, the single barrel one that they picked was also really uh, high proof, like 60-something percent. Mm-hmm. And that one, you could keep going. And it the just flavor... just out in your chat. I was wondering who just got timed out <laughs> i saw that and it distracted me so hard it's like stream elements timed out tap haven for 120 seconds reason nope i don't even know what that means. nope <laughs> i tried to do a link to ash, bardstown for ash you. removed your timeout oh man oh is there uh, amaro nonino yeah nonino. it's the amaro nonino oh nonino. man ash we need nonino. you just to make her and make, make tap haven a moderator honestly um, I have like no control here. 
Our, <laughs> I've got the what link now. What is happening, dude? Amaro well, no Nino. We're multitasking. Which is it is a uh, it's an all natural Amaro made with an infusion of herbs. It's essentially a liqueur that is like grape distillate aged with herbs and all of that type of thing. So it's got like chamomile, caramel, that like all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Mm. And Bardstown took Camel a milk? bourbon and aged it in Amaro no Nino barrels. This one's triple malted. <laughs> You said camel milk. Uh, yeah, I believe there's like chamomile Amaro and a whole bunch of other stuff. Chamomile. In- what did I say? Yeah. Is, it, is it pronounced? Wait, 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 wait. Sidebar. Is it pronounced chamomile? Chamomile. Chamomile. It's chamomile. Stop. It's chamomile. One second. One second. We gotta. We. I'm looking chamomile. up the pronunciation. It's it might chamomile. Be French, so it might be chamomile. Oh, I don't want to do that. Chamomile. You can't. Oh, uh, tea. Apparently, it is pronounced chamomile. Dang! Uh, does it feel good to be fucking right? I Listen, never knew teacher. That. Wow, that's crazy. That's supposed to rub it in. Mm. Oh, do it! Do it to the students. They love it. <laughs> you Man. Fuck apparently, like, that's right. apparently, both are colloquially acceptable, but the uh, official one is chamomile. Interesting. Chamomile, man. Okay, so well, this one's chamomile is more accepted colloquially. Oh, shut up, Eric. Whatever, dude. Keep on reading your freaking spiel or whatever. God damn. So this one is 111 (laughs) proof. It was $160. If you can find it now, it's probably at least $500, maybe $1,000 because they don't sell them anymore because it was a one time thing. Yeah. Though there's supposedly another set coming out. And hopefully mm-hmm. we catch it when it comes out. Um, this was also true of like the Ferrand edition of Bardstown, which we got to try in episode 12 or 13, I believe. That was fantastic. And that was the same type of thing. If you can find that bottle nowadays. Mm-hmm. Good luck, kids. Yeah. Now, so what I wanted to say is because the single barrel that I think we got a, that we have actually in my cabinet from whatever that freaking museum was is like 120 something proof there's more flavor in it 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 it's it's pretty incredible that one's a nine out of ten if you're not thinking about the price so i would definitely say that Frey ranch is an eight out of ten not thinking about the price but when you think about the price it's insane and it kind of bumps it up in my opinion because you're not getting an insanely good Bardstown for like less than 160, and that's twice as much as Frey Ranch. Yeah, I think when you start to consider price, it becomes very difficult. To Twenty-one bourbons against each other. But and guys, I, let's remove f- price from the from the discussion. Now, if that's you what I tried didn't to do. know. If you didn't know what this costs, you would still be rating this like fairly high. Yeah, still like seven or eight easily. Yeah, hundred percent. If you and didn't I, know, full stop, for anybody who's listening, this slaps. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Anyway, Eric, go ahead. Yeah. I, I was going to say, uh, so far, I've had so many different whiskeys. And this is, this is the entry to the epitome of whiskey. And it isn't up there with my nine, nines and tens. Like it isn't a nine. And I really look at this in the same light as I do the Free Ranch Rye. Yeah. Which, by the way, just for rating purposes, kind of, you know, kind of throw it out word. there for funny, funny things. Uh, and Ash, since she's listening, you know, Anthony may or may not have rated the uh, Frey Ranch right way higher than any of the Bards. But I mean, wow. you know, who's keeping track of that? Wow. Um, <laughs> wow. Uh, data never Just lies. throwing me under the bus here. No wonder. No, no worries. <laughs> uh, you know. You know, next time you come over, maybe I'll just let Deku roll around in your bed for a few days. <laughs> but, um,. But yes, I I think this sits right at an eight for me. I think this is where 
the upper echelon of whiskeys starts to really flourish. Mm. This is something that is just flavorful. I think there are some faults here. I, I, I agree that yeah. some extra age would mellow out the flavor a little bit, but could keep the heat and take out some of the corn syrupy sweetness. It kind of makes it more into a red hot than say something that is more nuanced in cinnamon and different spices that you could actually pick out. Mm. But it's tasty. It's fun. It's hot. It's, uh, you know, it's got a lot of character and that's just really cool. And this, this, I think it evens out with the Frey Ranch Rye for me. The Frey mm. Ranch Rye is also an aid in my book for totally different reasons. You know, that thing's also just amazing. Yep. So. I will definitely be really keeping good. a bottle of this. Yeah. For as long as I am drinking bourbon. Yeah, I definitely sure. think we've we've talked, said this the first time we inter- did Frey Ranch, but I, I think we're all very much Frey Ranch fans right now. So the only thing I can say to them is keep pushing out content and uh, we'll keep get some it. older aged stuff out there that yeah. I can try because I think that'll really diversify what we're dealing with here. Could you imagine a 10 year of this? I know. That's what I'm saying. Like how much one, one, how incredible it would be in terms of depth, but also yeah. two, how absurdly fast the shelves would clear of this bottle. Yeah. Because like, I know like 10 year would slap. We're not the first people to stumble across this. We're not the first people to come across Frey Ranch and be like, oh, these guys have the truth. Like, they get it. I can I can see a future where they get to the point where they're able to throw out these 10-year bourbons. And they never have to worry about putting out uncuts without people clearing shelves for them either. Because you, this, it's the only way you're going to get anywhere close to what they have, which is the Holy Grail. It's yeah. so close. Yeah. It's so close. And a- Anthony's saying uh, he's having some internet issues. He'll be back shortly. But he's saying we might have to get the single barrel rye, which I heavily agree with. The single barrel rye sounds amazing. Yeah. The quad malt to. apparently went out of stock within two weeks. This baby right <clears> here. <throat> oh. Y'all, if you can get it, get it yeah so um some tasting notes on this one okay. um there's like a oh man what do you, how, how would you there's like a grassy vibe to it uh. like oh man i don't even know how to describe it it's, it's a grassy note pretty much but it it takes all of the uh flavor pieces of the uncut and it molds it down the malted the malted experience brings the flavors down to like a more gentle kind of caru- uh, carousal through the flavor journey or whatever. But all this, all the depth is there. It's just you're not. It's the valleys aren't as deep. If that makes any sense, yeah. Like you're not, you're not going through a switchback. It's more so just like a gentle. Uh, winding road it's real nice that is, oh so good that sounds nice oh man i like i'm not even, i'm not doing it justice because there's like there's some really good tasting notes like i think i put down like there was like a little bit of orange in Ooh. it you know i love some orange in my whiskey. yeah yeah orange, like i have to say for people out there there are a few flavor combinations that just fucking slap It's bready orange, man. Yeah. Orange with chocolate Mm. or lemon and coffee. Bruh. Dude, if you've never done it, go make an espresso. No. No. Make an espresso. No. And put it in some orange juice. I know. No, 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 no. no. Put it in some lemonade. No. No, 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 no. no. (laughs) This is so much simpler. So much simpler. Oh, God. So much simpler. I can't know about this. Very better. simple. I have an espresso machine. All you have to do, chocolate orange. We already said that one. We already said chocolate orange. Get out of here. No, no, no but <laughs> you didn't explain <laughs> what it is. So you take an espresso, make an espresso. Mm-hmm. You have it in your little cup. 
Take a peeler and a lemon and peel the lemon over it and squeeze those oils out on top of the espresso. Ah, uh, uh, and just sorry. suck that thing down in one gulp. Oh sorry. my god, sir. <laughs> oh my god, sir. Get that caffeine Buy me straight a fucking into your drink blood. First. Jesus drink Christ. Drink. Yeah. Suck that thing down in one gulp. Oh Dude, my God. You Tell B you that do. you're cheating. Oh my <laughs> God. Uh, oh anyway. man. So good. Okay. But no, grassy. Um, I think I got banana on like one of them. It's just, it's a really oh, interesting blend of flavors. Like this I- one. These people are doing so good. Guys, people who are listening, try it. Try any of them. And just understand why why we are quickly becoming simps. Like it's we so are. bad. I, it's really bad. I'm about to follow them on X and actually oh. put put the bell on. Like anything they yeah. drop, I'll anything. buy as, as long as it's not so good over so good. 150. Now uh, it's over 150 Frey Ranch. As long as it's aged, I'm in. If it's if it's an eight year at 150 oh my years, God. yeah, seven yeah. year. I'm okay. Seven. Come on, oi! Come on, I'll yeah. even do six. Come on, baby. Yeah, oi! Whistle, in whistle. It. Like you, you got my wallet. Just take it. <laughs> <laughs> whistle. Can y'all hear me? <laughs> oh, while we're God. while we're waiting, I think Anthony's Anthony's listening in. Am I not back? Waiting. Yeah. What have you been playing this week? What have you been doing? How's the gaming been? Man, did I play anything last week? No, I didn't. Oh, no. Okay. So, I did play something this weekend. Okay. Um, I got into early alpha for Deadlock. Deadlock. Now, Deadlock is the, St- is the Steam equivalent to Overwatch. Now, I'm not sure if I'm actually allowed to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. Are you under NDA or anything like that? I don't. I, I didn't it. sign any. I didn't I sign doubt anything. It. If you're just, just in beta, you should be able to do it. I mean, here's the easiest oh, way to tell. I can't talk. 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 Oh no, <laughs> we're gonna have to stop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, there's no, there's no stuff on. Uh, uh, there's not a lot on YouTube. So, don't take me down with you. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so I've played nothing. I've played nothing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Anthony was I've like, no, nothing. you can't say anything. You can't say anything. Okay. Um oh, man. I didn't I haven't played anything. I haven't played anything. You're killing me. You're killing me. <laughs> can y'all hear me yet? Can we wait, are we can we snip that? I hope not. I hope we can actually like stop that from hitting the stream. No, no. It's it's live on stream. Here's the thing, it won't ever go up to a live video. I can That's I can fair. snip it out of the final video. Cool. So, okay. So the live audience knows what you played. Don't take me down. Okay. Thank you, Anthony. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You can you can cool. say that you played it. You just yeah. can't talk about details of the game. Anything oh, that okay, would give cool. away what's in the actual even, NDA. Perfect. He caught me right before I was about to screw yeah. myself. Excellent. So yeah. I think they can't um, hear me because so I'm still uploading from behind. Um, it's, it's interesting. This weird riverside um, thing. let's see, what did I do before that? Let me. Oh, I really want to play Raven's Watch because they're about to release 1.0. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, it's about to hit. I'm very excited. I finally. Okay, another story. Um, so I've been waiting on Prince of Persia for a week because I don't know if anybody has ever interacted with Ubisoft. Did I talk about this last week? You did. You uh, talked podcast? a little bit about okay. Prince of Persia last week. I haven't touched it since then. Which is which is kind of sad, and I really want to kind of talk about it because, like, is there something that's, that's like not bringing you back? No, to it? it's it's literally just like the fact that like I had this terrible experience with Ubisoft, and like yeah, it's really weird. I'm at ninety eight percent uploaded to the the account to play the game, Ugh. and like it's kind of introduced 99. this element of. Like, oh, there was resistance Eventually to me they'll hear me. something, so therefore it's no longer something that I can enjoy. And so I've kind of put it off to this back burner area where I'm like, I don't really... It's not fair to me to do that because it's great, but I don't know. I just feel really bad in the sense that they took a game that I know is probably is most likely fabulous and up my, line, up my lane 
And oh, Anthony has an important question. Yes. What is the important question? What game has shown you how awesome your PC is? None, yeah. because have I you, haven't played anything. You haven't played that was like, like tr- that's like taxing it. Really? Like nothing has like even got it to like rise oh, to man. the occasion. Everything I, is I, just wait, like have it's you, like. <laughs> have you done? Hmm. Uh, Cyberpunk, the new DLC, the expansion, the Phantom Liberty. I have no interest in playing Cyberpunk, honestly. Really? Yeah, CD Projekt Red can have all of my money when it's in, when it's invested in Witcher, but CD Projekt, uh, what is it, Cyberpunk? I t- just doesn't interest you. I could give two fucks. And I will say, honestly. Phantom Liberty is really really cool. I, think I heard Phantom, it's great. Yeah. yeah. If you like that sort of game, Phantom Liberty is like what made Cyberpunk a great game. Mm-hmm. Before Phantom Liberty, it was it they fixed a lot of the stuff. It was good. I it was am doing singing. Fun. Yeah. Phantom Liberty I was amazing. Singing. But the one good thing is Cyberpunk. I know how graphics mods. Will somebody will save me? Oh, no, don't tell that. Don't tell that to me. <laughs> Those are also, Anthony's Anthony. on point. The the anime. The anime is great. I watched the anime. Anime's the anime is so much better than any experience that I've had with CD Pro- with uh, Cyberpunk. Yeah. Not that I've had any experience with Cyberpunk, so I can't really say anything. But like the anime is, oh, it's, so, it's so good. It oh, thinking about it makes me so sad. But all it's like that yeah. bittersweet feeling. Hundred percent. And I I know that like that's the sign of a great anime. If you've ever like watched something and you're like, oh, that evokes a feeling in me even now, and it's just me thinking about some of the scenes that I've seen, so good. Uh, but um, I have been watching. Sing harder, today. harder, um, better, faster, thankfully. stronger. It's been. I don't a know long that song. Time coming. <laughs> I just started the Elusive Samurai. Ooh, Wit is going off. They are going fucking left. The, the I don't know if I'm ever going to reconnect. Like, I think it's going to sit at 99% it permanently. Is, it's challenging your perception of like an action scene in the no. sense that the main character is doing nothing to incur any violence. <laughs> they are just trying to get away. And in them doing so, you see the brutality of this world. And it is so good. And it's just the first episode. So I'm very excited. I watched that. That was really good. I don't remember the artist who was behind. Uh, sorry, the manga artist behind that. But it's it's so good. Um, anyway, uh, there's also Wistoria, Blade and Wand or something. The Blade and the Wand. It is... I feel like it's the sleeper hit of this anime season in the sense that it's so like it's so stereotypical. It's a kid that doesn't know how to do any magic in a magic school. Oh, yes. Yeah. And you can guess the reason why he's there and why he's still there and trying to get to the top of the mountain. Yeah. What do you what do you think it is, Eric? Go ahead and predict. What do you think is at the top? What do you think is going on with this tower that's in the center of the school? What do you think is going on? Don't know yet, but I you know, know he's gonna he's gonna rip shit open. Oh god, come on, man, think about it. Why would a boy be in a magic school after he can't cast any magic? Why would he be there? Why is he even there in the first place? It's simple, Eric. Simple. I haven't seen any of it it's the yet. Reason, it's the reason we do anything, Eric. Because he on. wants to he wants to prove a point. No! It's kind of fun just being the on girl. the sidelines, though. Uh-oh. It's like we're doing uh-huh. a... It's like we're all just watching anyway. the podcast <laughs> anyway. together now. So he <laughs> is in this magic academy, and the way they depict the fact that he is literally... He is the physical specimen like 900 like fast smart um sees something once and knows how to dodge it and use it for to his advantage incredibly intelligent and it's like yes i get that this is a power fantasy but at the same time it's good and it's really well animated i don't remember the animation studio behind wistoria but 
the general story is corny enough that you're like, okay, like this will be nothing, and then you kind of start watching it. And I'm like, chattering oh, out just like Ash. This this slaps. This is pretty good. <laughs> This also slaps. This is also very good. So this was by Jinan. Is this Jinan Studio? Who is this? Who did Wistoria? Has two anime studios. We can talk. We can shit talk oh. them. And they would never know. Studio so much Actus power. I love you. <laughs> Damn. Well, I don't know who they are, but they're freaking. They're killing it. Killing right it. Now. It's so good. It's so good. So those are my two animes, the things that I've been like imbibing media wise. I would love to play a little bit more Hades, but it's not uh, it's not on my menu uh, as of right now. The only thing I really want to do at this point is to pick up a game that I've had no prior engagement with whatsoever, story wise or gameplay wise, and play that. Because right now I feel bo- I'm pretty bored. <laughs> I- no, we can't hear you, Anthony. Do y'all see the changes? Can is you hear it, me now? He... Oh. Did that fix anything? I no, we, we definitely can't hear Anthony. He's having no. he's having some issues. Technical uh, difficulties. Oh, and I started trying to freaking play guitar again. Nice. Oh, God. Yeah, I'm trying to practice rather than just trying to skip past the whole, you know, learning your instrument thing and just playing music. Yeah. And music. that's hard. And um, that's what it is. Oh. What it is. But it he's is. Back. Oh. Oh. He's back. I'm back. We Anthony, can hear, we hear ourselves, ourselves in Anthony's, Anthony's stream right now. Anthony, please, please God. God. Oh. You, Jacko. Okay. Oh, he's gone again. And he's gone. There he's he gone. Goes. And he's gone again. But yeah, um, that's all I've got to say about that. Yeah, I. We so the only anime I've been keeping up with lately has been Tower of God, season two out. Which, uh, yeah, yeah, Tower of oh, God season two how, is out. How far into it is it? Um, only a few episodes. I think we're like four as an weeks. anime. Yeah, oh, Tower no. of God. That one's good. So good, so good. Dude, this is so. Anthony, have you read Tower of God? I think I might have. I'm not really sure. I didn't okay. read all the way through it, obviously. Yeah, it's I a long, did not either. 900 a plus long. chapters. It's hitting. It's it's a lot. I think guys. it was it one of those life. that was, it's one of those animes that was so good that I started reading it. It is an amazingly done. So here's, here's the only, there are, man, it is yep. such a good manga. It is a webtoon, really, more than it is a manga. The guy actually started it on the web, webtoon fully. <laughs> mm-hmm. It is phenomenal however mm-hmm. when he first started he had a great idea and then he was also learning how to write while doing this webtoon so it has some bleach areas Very where there's so. a lot of talent a lot of great ideas a lot of cool stuff but the anime kind of has to step around some of the drier parts and so the first season is so wonderfully done, and the first season in the webtoon is such a promising, beautiful idea. Mm-hmm. The second season is covering important stuff where the author essentially was like, I have this really cool idea, but it's going to take a lot of setup. And a in the webtoon, yeah, in the webtoon, there is like, 100 chapters of setup. However, stop. Nah. Stop. No, 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 no. No, you don't get to pass over the fact that this setup takes 100 chapters. Well, a little bit, but here's the thing. Nat, yeah. they're the scene that they did in season two was 10 times better than it was in the webtoon. It's one of my favorite moments in the webtoon. It's in season two. Is it and what was that? Is it viol? What's going on? No, it's not viol. It's um, uh, coon. Oh. So, Anthony, do you remember any of the story so I can talk about it a little bit? God, 
You can talk Dang about it. it. It's fine. Okay. I okay. saw okay. all of season one. Okay. Okay. So, so you already so, know. So you, you, know already know. you already know. You know who Kuhn is. He's the blue hair guy. And Kuhn is the main character's best friend. Mm. The, this guy, spoil, oh, there's slight spoilers, nothing too crazy, but this guy really didn't have friends before the main character came around. And the main character became his best friend. He was like, this is my guy. You. Yeah. He's like, not only is I'll this my anything. guy, I am protecting this guy. Th- this guy and me are climbing the tower together. We are doing this. And at the end of season one, something one of th- something really bad happens. And the yeah. character that does this bad thing ends up with Kuhn. And for all intents and purposes, Kuhn is like, the season starts and you meet Kuhn and Kuhn's all lovey-dovey with this character. He's like, we're going to help you because, you know, this is what my friend wanted. It's what Bob would have like wanted. That. And all of a sudden, this episode builds up. And at the end of this episode, it goes in and you you the colors start to like desaturate around him. And then there's like gl- small glitches at the edge. And he's like building this team and this team is coming together for a meeting without that other character. He's like, I want y'all to climb this tower with this person. I want you to do anything that she needs. I want you to help her. And all the <laughs> while, the like quality of the animation is like breaking around him. Like glitches, oh, good. sound design is breaking, and his eyes start to like glow as the whole scene is essentially dark. And he's like, but don't you dare become attached because soon we're gonna take everything from this person. Yeah. We're going to annihilate not just the idea of hope for this person, but everything that they want. I'm going to take everything. And the scene is the sound like drops out and there's just like a that, wine. That negative space. Yeah, and it's man. like his voice and the voice actor is just like hitting so hard. <laughs> you can like feel his voice breaking because of what this person did to him. And he's like, he's getting emotive with it. right? Yeah. Cause like, yeah, and he's man. like, I am not going. And here's the thing earlier in the episode, he like has this weird, awkward scene where he's like holding a knife while hugging her type of deal. Uh-huh. And you're like, Oh man, he's going to do it. He's he, <laughs> does he know? Does he not know? And at this point yeah. in the story, you don't know what, is real or not this character does not know what is actually happened he just knows what he thinks happened Mm -hmm. and you're like and you as the watcher you know what happened right but none of these characters and then all of a sudden like you're watching her and what's a scene and it like turns into that tv type of effect and you Mm -hmm. see him watching the tv in his room and you're like, oh, so shit, he knows. So good. So good. And it's just like, and then he walks over and he does this speech. And that whole episode, here's the thing. When the author wrote the webtoon at that point in time, that speech is like one page of this yeah. webtoon. It's and nothing. it's got it's a, a bubble the- and no. it's got him in the background. And it is such an impactful moment in the manga, like the the webtoon, but man, in the anime, it slaps. And it's we, one of those we cases. Had the same thing with like <laughs> solo uh, leveling. Solo leveling. Yeah. This was we had a moment. Like that. Yeah. yeah. I love that. I love it when an animation studio takes something, takes the meaning of the source material, and lifts it up to something that's even more special for moments that were also special in the webtoon or manga because all they're doing is showing that they respected the source material and what it built up in that moment and they wanted Mm. to show their respect for this great moment and like that's just really cool to me so tower of god is doing great yeah would you consider and it's it's 
a rare situation that we're in now because we're two for two. Well, we're not technically two for two. We're two for three in terms of Manwa. Like we have Tower of God, which season one was incredible. Season two is doing very well. Yeah. From what I can assume. Yeah. Um, we have solo leveling, which had an incredible Popping season one. Off. Yeah. Incredible season one. And we know that season two is going to be going into some stuff that it's going to. Uh, well, actually, I don't think we'll get to the culmination of what I think they'll get to. I don't think they'll get to the island, Eric. I don't think they'll do that in this next season because of what they're advertising. I thought about this. I think the let's season finale. Let's not delve into it too deep well, because well, we don't want to spoil it. So the only thing is, because it was the opening scene of the anime setting that up, mm-hmm. and that's not how the the, the manga does it. Like that's the webtoon fair. doesn't do it in the yeah. same way. Because mm-hmm. of that, I think season one, the season finale, is going to introduce why that was the first scene in some shape or form. So okay. you're right. I don't think they're going to be there. But I the, think we're going to I think we're going to yeah. be like it's I think be the, the final thing. scene is going to be a mirror image of the first scene where that same group is going. OK. Yeah. No, yes. Yes. Right. Absolutely. I absolutely. think that's going to be the final scene of the first season. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, that being said, we're two for three because we did have God of High School. Oh, yeah. yeah. And animation wise, incredible. Story wise, I don't know what you guys were smoking, but yeah. no. Yeah. Anthony, do you remember Tower of God? Uh, sorry, uh, High School? Hi- God of High School? I never saw God of High School or read it. Yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah, you're good. Um, but <laughs> do you think there's going to be. Sp- I, I don't think there's been any rumor of it. I haven't seen it. Do you think Breaker is ever going to come? Dude? I hope so. Guys, I have a fucking story for you. Did you start uh, reading it after last week? After last week, and now my Ooh, wife is finally okay. going to be spoiled. I ordered something on Amazon called Breaker Volumes 1 through 5 Physical Paperback oh, yeah. Edition. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, that, you know, that's, that can't be good because of how he's starting this story. This is very true. It's right behind me. What I got was an empty box. Oh. What? An I received box? my first ever empty box from Amazon. That's no. wild. The Amazon experience for not getting what you bought is terrible i was i had to contact the seller i couldn't tell amazon hey they sent me nothing Mm -hmm. the seller goes can you send us a picture of the like notification on the box that says that you you, that the united states (laughs) postal service separated the item from your box i i go and double check the box i'm like that's one span of tape flip it over two spans of tape no there's no cut no one's ever opened this box before me you liars like you, know what you can do though you can you can track it through usps or fedex doesn't matter weight. actually because in most cases they just write the weight i looked for the weight i couldn't find a weight they claim it was seven pounds but there's certain cases where maybe they weigh it and there's certain cases oh, where man. you tell them the weight and that's all that matters they just put that weight that you told them on it yeah looking at this yeah. box they never sent it to me i i'm wow. certain they never sent it to me and amazon is like oh you have to talk to the seller within and if they don't respond within 48 hours you can do an a to z thing and then the seller's like you need to do an a to z thing to protect both of us like just do the a to z thing right no and I can't. Anthony, I literally no. can't do the A to Z thing. I'm looking online. I find a Reddit post that says, like, this is why you need to use a good credit card. Just, like, go to the credit card and and dispute yeah, the transaction. Dispute the I went yeah. onto the credit card. By the way, it's an Amazon credit card. Oh, and it was right easy no. to dispute the charge and I get the money back. But I don't have 
the freaking in-person breaker anime that I was so excited for that I was ready to go to my wife and be like, look, you can finally read it in person. So you, but, so this is all a very long story to say that you have read the breaker. I've read the so shit out of the yeah. breaker, just not the new stuff that I didn't know existed because I stopped after new waves. I think so. Yeah. I, I went as far so as breaker, the breaker guy that you love is the terrible guy and you're like he's lying right he's faking it right he's got to be faking it right oh, he's man. still good right and i'm no, still hoping man. but i don't know i don't know okay. is he faking it okay okay good to know it, it's and eric i can't wait <laughs> eric your thoughts on whether or not you think the breaker is going to make it to the screen because i i there is a better possibility now than there ever has been before, but I don't think the breaker is popular enough to, 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 to do this. You, you have to remember solo leveling tower of God, no bless. You're talking about crazy fan. I mean, these, these sold more copy. Those four probably sold more copies in Korea than every other manhwa combined. And as much as I think The Breaker is this wonderful manga and in my top five and just is worth reading by everybody and I'm a diehard fan, I'm also, I also understand that like it is a niche manhwa in general. It might be too one dimensional now I think about it. It is very one dimensional. Uh, Like there isn't a lot going on. You got two main characters right like it's just yeah the trainee and the trainer and if you don't a lot of it and if you don't like super love one of them you don't care yeah i think they solve that in the middle of season two a little bit where they start to introduce other characters that you care about and in season three they introduce a few more because the point of view is actually from a different character entirely is Um, this the one i haven't read yes Oh, okay. Is it Shin Woo? Is it Shin Woo? You'll have to see. You'll have to see, dude. But um, but yes, I think uh, in a lot of ways, like they solve a little bit of that, and that's really cool. That yes, I know. I'm 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 doing stuff on the side. You literally just did that because I was like, did he do this ten minutes ago, or is he actively talking while he pushed a button? I've been trying to do it for a, for a while, and I just was able to get it to work. New announcement, guys. On Twitch, we're now collaborating. I don't know what it means, but Eric made it happen. It means our chats are combined. <gasps> are so, you serious? Yeah, our That's chats too should cool. be combined. Mm. Um, and a few other things. God, okay. So, Next time, that'll be even better then. Yes. I just figured out how to make it work. It's a new new thing on Twitch. But Ooh. yeah, because of those reasons, I, I don't think that it is going to, I don't think it's going to be turned into an anime anytime soon, at least. Not so, in front of Omniscient Reader. Yeah, 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 exactly. Omniscient exactly. Reader, like that company is going to be the one that starts doing more of their animations because yeah. they have the hookups, they have the connections. Solo leveling was so popular. I mean, here's the thing. Solo leveling was so popular that it dragged Tower of God in Through with the it. fucking run. You know? Yeah, dude. Yeah. Like, it's just that. It's good. that it's that it's that impactful. Yeah. Not that good, but it's just that impactful. Agreed. It's unfortunate that uh, the breaker is not even close, which is uh, so good. That and uh Veritas. You remember Veritas? Yeah, dude, Veritas. Yeah, back in the day. Back in the day when I had time to just like sc- scrum through just trash anime after yeah. trash anime. Yeah. Sorry, manga after trash manga. Ugh. Dude, now that I'm Ugh. finally reading manga again, I'm starting to understand why like so often like Eric and my wife will be talking about um my hero because they both read it fully and they're just like oh my god seeing that like 
on screen was amazing. And I'm like, re- I'm finally reading, what is it, the Moro arc of Dragon Ball Super. And I'm like, I really want this to be animated right now. <laughs> like, uh, let me try to imagine this as much as I can, but it's not in color. Uh, <laughs> so. I will say that the author of My Hero does a really good job with the cinematic uh, oh, for okay, okay. standing okay. of their chapters. It's they're really good at it. Okay, I'm gonna be real because I don't think we can talk about it yet. Um I don't think Eric, we can actually don't. talk no. about the ending, no. right? Neither no, of can. you have read it. I've read it. Of course Eric, who do you think I am? Who do you I'm here for the end of all of the big babies. Like I'm here for uh, JJ. Anthony, I need I need you to mute soon. us for like ten seconds. I'll put up my finger. I need Wait. you to mute us for a second. Okay. <laughs> You're muted. Okay. Nat. Yeah. Just real quick. All right, guys. Did you like so the ending the or silence, did you not like I'm the ending? I'm going to tell I you guys about that one time. Fucking me too. When, okay. Oh, we're, good. we're good. It's so, it's not. Oh. <laughs> we'll talk about it once Anthony finishes reading it more. <laughs> My uh, hero. Yes. My hero. Correct. Yes. Yeah, you gotta that's, that's, you gotta read my hero. And you finish. gotta finish, dude. You and apparently, watch. you're close. The anime is close. I know. Yeah. Mm. No. Oh man, anime is close. I was. I okay. Ha! You uh, know, speaking of uh, video games. Yes. So there was this one video game that I played recently. I'm not gonna say too much about it, but um, it's really good, and I think Eric probably is able to play it too, and he should probably play it, and. It's it's really cool and might be the big next big thing. And I think the whole uh, secrecy behind it might be a marketing tactic that people don't understand. Uh, but technically, I would also agree. technically, people have been banned. Technically, people have been banned. Not that we would get banned because like that would be on their radar. Right. But, but Eric, go also, check your yeah. Steam notifications, because in case y'all didn't get invited, I made sure that all the people I know that would play a game like that got invited. And okay. it's worth checking out while you can, because it's yeah, I'll, it's really I'll cool. Check it out. You might love it. It's interesting. It's interesting. Yeah, I'll check it out. Hmm. But that's pretty hmm. much the only other game I've played other than games that Nat doesn't approve of. Yeah, I was about to say. It's so we're true. we're gonna get into the final conversation probably of the night, which Nat will uh, genuinely uh, not check enjoy. out with. Yes. <laughs> so I I have been. Uh, Addicted to RuneScape this week. I'm going to go so. eat some fucking food. You guys enjoy. <laughs> Matt's like, face. <laughs> oh, He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. So oh, could he? Before Nat even got here, we were like, we were conspiring <laughs> to get him to drink way too much of this uncut Frey Ranch in order to get him sloshed so he wouldn't nope out and hate us for talking about RuneScape again. Obviously, it didn't work out. Who is this? I don't know who A who is. is. Is that Ash? No, I don't know. I don't know I who that is. Imagine it is. It's just A. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, I have to imagine. So it uh, RuneScape. Yeah. So I've been doing a lot of RuneScape, doing a lot of the quests, doing you know all the new. There's so many new things that are just really cool about it. I've been doing all the new mini games that weren't there when I was a kid. The biggest thing and Eric and I were talking about earlier is that as when we were kids, we didn't like RuneScape so much. At, we liked it, and then eventually we didn't like it because it was just too nothingness in a way. It was There's too much empty yeah. space. But now it's kind of like a fidget spinner where it's a game that you can play while doing something else, like watching a TV series or something like that. Like yeah, I've been watching, I've been playing it while watching Smallville with my wife at night. Nice. Yeah, it's. I th- I talked about it a little bit last week, but RuneScape I think is the only game that has mastered the attention mechanic, and everything that you do in that game has a dial that the developers can adjust about how much attention you want to put into something or how much reward you get out of it. So there are things you can put little to no attention to into 
and it doesn't do a lot, but it always progresses your account. And then other times you can do something that requires a massive amount of attention. It's like playing a Osu game and you can get a ton of stuff out of it. And so it has this attention mechanic in it that is really not in other games to this level, at least. Sorry, I'm dying over here because I'm like talking in Twitch chat like, who's A? Do we know who this is? This mysterious A? And Ash is just like, bro, of course it's me. Yes. <laughs> it's a different account. Yeah, why does it just tell us A, though? Like, Ash, is your name A on YouTube? <laughs> like, it doesn't say anything. <laughs> Anyways. But yeah, RuneScape, but, um, RuneScape has become, become something really cool. Because back in the day, like, anything that you could do that was cool was very dangerous. And then everything else was like, go fish up a bunch of lobster or sharks right here walk a few feet over there, cook them up, throw them away or put them in the bank if there was one, do it again. Now, instead of that, it's like, go to Winter Todd as level nothing, like within an hour of playing the game. You could die if you don't pay enough attention. So if you're doing hardcore, good luck. And there's just all these cool, really neat mini games. And on top of that, like I started using Rune Light. Um, which Jagex themselves is like, hey, you could use Rune Light if you don't want to use the base game, but you know, we didn't make it, so be careful. But it, it might work out great. And you go there and you turn on HD graphics, and it's like, holy crap, this is like this is oh. like uh whatchamacallit on steroids, Valheim on steroids, where it's it's got those pixely not pixely, it's um low poly, I guess, but high res but high resolution Yeah. It's like high texture. High, high texture, texture, yeah. High texture. High res textures. Yeah. And it looks great. And it, it almost feels yeah. like H, not HDR. It almost feels like ray tracing. I'm sure there's not ray tracing. But like the lighting is so much better than base RuneScape that it feels like there's ray tracing going yeah, on. And really nice. Now, and one of the they're... things we mentioned that, you, well, you never played RuneScape, right? No. Okay. So when we were talking about it earlier, we realized RuneScape is like a fidget spinner. And so if like when you are uh, playing guitar, you're kind of almost like fidgeting, right? At that same time, like like the same sort of time could be filled playing RuneScape, basically. Obviously, playing guitar is way better than playing RuneScape. The same thing could be said about World of Warcraft. What are you talking about? Can I though? think it's different. World I think of it's Warcraft different, is more though, involved in the sense that... Ru oh. And this is what I was saying right before you came back. Okay. RuneScape has, and I talked a little bit about it last week, everything in RuneScape has an attention dial that determines how much you have to pay attention to what you're doing in RuneScape to progress your account. That's fair. So... World of Warcraft, do you have it? Like, the dial is always at least medium to high. Exactly. Yeah. In RuneScape, there are some things where you can click once a minute and you're progressing your account and you're doing things that will help you. And while you're doing that, you can work on things, you can code other stuff. Like I've been doing, you know, some coding on the side. I've been doing, you know, watching videos or watching shows. I've been able to do all of these different things while also just having RuneScape go on the side and be doing different tasks. And that is something that no other game does as well as RuneScape in the sense that it is essentially the perfect fidget spinner for how much you want to pay attention to the fidget spinner. Yeah, and when, and we, when we were kids, so my dad had a lot of time working from home. And he played, and none of us kids understood how he was getting so far ahead of us, how he was playing the game all the time, it felt like. And we were like, do you even work? And eventually us kids were like, this is boring now, we're going to move on. But he kept doing it because it was and still is a game that you can have on the side while doing other things and constantly progress. And it actually like it's one of those weird things. I can't remember the psychology behind it, but my boss has talked to me about it before where he's like, 
your brain sometimes has like empty cycles is the way he puts it. And if you don't have something to fill those empty cycles while you're waiting on another thing, you move on and you don't come back for too long. So if you have just the right amount of fidget thing, you get more shit done because while you're waiting those 5, 10, 15, 30 seconds for something to respond so you can move on, you filled that time staying in the same spot rather than going and cleaning your house or something like that. I don't fucking know. It's yeah. it's really and as a weird. Kid, but we, you should clean your house, though. Yeah, It's a different... I, I get what you mean. I get <laughs> And it was really hard to conceptualize that as a kid of like why that's so interesting. But I, I think there's one other mechanic that I've been mulling over for RuneScape that I think RuneScape probably does a better job at gamifying delayed gratification better than almost any other game. Because... In a lot of cases, RuneScape is a time investiture payoff model, right? If you invest 40 hours into this skill, you're able to do something that is insane once you invest enough time into it. And so you have this thing that gives you small dopamine rushes. It gives you small little things that you can fill the gap with. And then when you hit you know, 99 or when you hit a, some threshold that allows you to do something, the payoff that it gives you in RuneScape a lot of times is like game changing in how much it affects what you can do, right? And so that type of thing is really cool. And I was watching, there's a great YouTuber called Settled. I heavily recommend watching some of his videos. He has the best RuneScape content that I've seen. He does insane challenges and does long form videos on them. So they're like 11, 12 hour videos that he that he initially did as like 20 minute videos. And there were like seasons. One of them was called uh, Tile Man. And so he went and he had to gain a thousand experience to unlock a tile. Every tile in the game that he wanted to move to, he had to get a thousand experience before he could unlock that tile and move there. And he went through and had to do all of these crazy things to like get experience. Like from the start, where he spawned, one tile. He had to wait for a man to come over to pickpocket him to get five experience and slowly build up like a thousand experience to unlock a second tile. But some of the things that he does, like you invest enough time and the payoff that you get from it is just evident and so clear and so tangible in RuneScape that isn't really done in a lot of games anymore. I feel like old school World of Warcraft did this really good with raiding, but I feel like only the raiding part of it really did a great job about that. So RuneScape has that built into all aspects of the game. Yeah, And so this whole thing is a delayed gratification simulator where every skill has this like pop off dopamine moment it's really yeah. really cool there's a weird thing that so many games have done where it's like everything has to be accessible so like in world of warcraft every single skill every single person must be able to max out and get all the rewards from and do 100 percent unlocked achievements otherwise we've failed and they're going to be mad but now we have games coming out that i can't wait for like I think maybe Ashes of Creation is the game where there's a skill for charcuterie and you could get to max level just doing charcuterie, but there's going to be so much time and effort to put into it that it's unrealistic for there to be very many people to max that out and to get high level and actually do the thing that people need so if you do find that to be your like main profession you're gonna be heavily rewarded for it and you're gonna actually have like social mmo aspects occur because people are gonna be like i really need this thing and it's gonna take me a thousand or ten thousand hours just to get to it i'm not doing that so i'm gonna buy it from this person and so it's a neat thing that i think 
games like Ashes of Creation are going to try and kind of bridge the gap because what does World of Warcraft do somewhat well? They have somewhat engaging game plan mechanics. I say somewhat because most of it, honestly, eventually gets kind of soft to me. Like, I know their mechanics can be engaging, but there's no... Um, what's the word? It It's like when you feel a speaker hit you with the sound. There's no feeling in World of Warcraft. It's it's too flat. flat. It's flat, yeah. Um, I believe games like Ashes of Creation are trying to have both the insanely deep grind potential that you could completely avoid if you're not that type of person, and then also the insanely engaging combat mechanics that are just rewarding and cool and awesome. And that's kind of a, a holy grail of an MMO. I mean, you also have to nail the social in part, which is hard. But if you can do those two mechanics, because so many of us are like, I want to play a game, but I want to make progress in like my main game, but I can't make progress in my main game unless I'm doing it the right way it's just weird does that make sense yeah no, no no that makes perfect sense i will say that leads me to what i'm excited for uh and because i've been in all the runescape thing i actually see that anthony already wants this game funnily enough um i'm adding it to my wish list too as well i didn't know it was on steam i just knew about it from all the videos i've seen the lead designer, the sole developer of the original RuneScape, is releasing a new MMORPG later this year called Brighter Shores. And it looks really, really good so far. And a lot of the things, he I like everything that I've seen upon it, it really does feel like RuneScape if it were made in 2024. It has newish features, new types of designs, new types of skilling and stuff like that from the, the videos that I have seen, new ways to interact with the environment and things like that. But with the same type of core idea from RuneScape with updated concepts right and of course he wasn't the one who was the main designer for runescape 3 so a lot of people are really excited for this one because they didn't like how runescape 3 kind of moved away from old school runescape in the same way this this guy is really trying to design runescape but made today in a different world with different lore different stories but with the general same general idea, which is really, really cool. It isn't going to be, I don't, I don't, I'm not really looking at it to be some groundbreaking MMO. Like I am for like ashes of creation that I think is really going to change the game, but I am really excited to see a passion project like this, where somebody's trying to take something that they already made that they loved and just make it a better version of that with the same goals, which is really cool. You know, um, that's need, what I'm excited for. We need uh, movies to start doing what video games do. So there's a lot of uh, apparent backlash against Ashes of Creation because people don't know how to wait patiently for a game to come out. And they don't understand what an alpha is because so many studios say, oh, it's an alpha, but really they are porting a game that's fully released from like PC to Nintendo Switch or something stupid like that. And so no one like understands that it takes like five to 15 years for something this like really big to come out. And I can't, I, I mean, I swear the uh, avatar movies with the blue people took like years to develop. Not he started making the first. Uh, 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 I'm going a lot of off memory chat. Don't crucify me, but 
But if I remember correctly, I think he, he started the idea of the original Avatar before Titanic. Yeah. And then when they film it, it takes an insane amount of time. And then the post-production takes like three or four more years. And it's just like, and that's a movie. Compared to a video game, movies are freaking easy. <laughs> In some ways, yeah. Like you it it's it's insane. Yeah. yeah, simulation versus scripted, you know. Is yeah. a different beast. Yeah, Ashes of Creation are doing an alpha soon and they're gonna have like more common alphas. Apparently you can buy your way into their alpha. And they've been very clear that buying your way into the alpha is not buying the game. Oh. Which is a good thing for them to do. Well, because think about it. It's like, it, I agree with this. If I made a really big game and I wanted people to test it, but I couldn't let everybody in, maybe charge 5 or $10 for you to come and play the alpha. But eventually it's going to be, it, is it going to be a one-time payment game? Not a subscription, but an MMO? How, what is the model for making money off of that? You know, if it's going to be a one-time payment, that's got to be at least a $60 game. Yeah. Easy. But like, you can't survive as an MMO without either regular expansions for people to pay for or microtransactions in some weird, like cosmetic way. Because you have uh, to pay for those there servers. There are a lot of MMOs that make are are able to do a free to play model and not have something that psychologically makes you want Praise to pay, to my, to, you yeah. know? <laughs> I mean, it's hard. Sorry, Ash got banned from YouTube. Oh. What'd she do? I don't know. <laughs> Apparently Dang. she got banned from our YouTube chat. <laughs> what did she do? I don't even see that. What I don't do know, you man. Mean? Don't do don't worry about her. it. Don't worry about it. Maybe maybe it didn't happen. Maybe it's just YouTube being YouTube. Yeah, I don't That's know. Fair. It'd just be YouTube being YouTube. That's funny. Oh! Well, I guess with that, get you know, out of here. Go another home. Another great episode. Don't don't say that. Uh, I'm talking to the viewers. Me. Don't you tell me to leave. Don't Talking to the viewers. No, we're going to go and hang out and have a don't great you. time. And y'all are going to wish y'all could hang out with us. We're so don't cool. you. <laughs> well, next week, I, I don't know whether or not we'll be back on the Flavia or something new, but we'll have something fun to try, I am sure. But with that said, y'all have a good week. We'll catch you in the next one. Enjoy the Freight Ranch, people. Bye. Yes, sir. Go get some. Peace.